Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Thursday mountain weather update. Let's go to California where it's snowing right now across Lake Tahoe. This is Mount Rose, north side of Lake Tahoe. It is snowing there. Snow levels are running about 6,000 feet. This is Palisades Tahoe, moderate to heavy snow accumulations here across a lot of Lake Tahoe above 6,000 feet, obviously snowing there. That is awesome to see. That is part of our next storm system that will eventually race into the interior, but right now it's clear across the interior. This is Vail, Colorado, looking out over, a, over the Gore Range there in the distance and just crystal clear. Little bit of snow tomorrow in the afternoon for Colorado and maybe a little bit on Sunday. So I'll look at that in my forecast just up the way to the east. Here's Loveland Ski Area. And it is also crystal clear up there this morning with temperatures in the teens and a little bit gusty with 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. Alta, Utah, also clear and dry. You may have a little bit of snow coming tomorrow and then again over the weekend. I'll look at it in my forecast. Here's radar across the west. You can see the rotation and all that precip slamming into parts of uh, California. A lot of rain at lower elevations and again snow above roughly 6,000 feet for Tahoe and beyond. And what will happen is this storm system will then break loose and race and kind of lose a lot of its moisture as this happens, but then race across Utah and Colorado um, basically on Friday and then move away. And there's a larger storm system behind this. Let's go to the Northeast and you can see these plumes of lake effect snow as expected coming off of Erie and Ontario. And look at that plume just south of the Buffalo metro area. Looks like it's very close to moving in there. Um, and also uh, north towards Syracuse. You've got uh, north of Syracuse, a, that pretty good plume of snow right there. So lake effect in control for sure. Okay, here's uh, water vapor satellite imagery across the west. So on this, oranges and reds are your drier air aloft. The moisture aloft is in the whites and the blues. And there's our storm system hitting California. And again, eventually that races through the interior on Friday, loses a lot of its moisture. Larger storm system back here. That's the next one. That's got a lot of jet support and a little bit of atmospheric river support. And that one will slam directly into the Sierra and then eventually move into the interior. In fact, look at the integrated vapor transport. This is how we spot atmospheric river moisture. And you can see the spike here, basically late on the 13th into the 14th and then decreasing on the 15th. So that's that next storm system. The current storm, very weak AR. This next one will certainly have weak to maybe even early, maybe even entry level moderate atmospheric river moisture. And there might be another storm behind that for 16, 17. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, here is my snow timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, Interior, BC, and the Northeast. So for example, in the Wasatch, you've got light snow accumulation potentially coming. And I'll show you the split in the data on this on 12, 13, and then light to moderate accumulations, 12, 14, and 15. And Colorado light 12, 13, light 12, 15, in fact, very light, and then light on 12, 17, 12, 18. So no big direct storm systems for Colorado in my forecast at this point. Everything seems to just brush Colorado and go to the north. That's the way it looks to me. Now, interior BC, you've got a pretty good shot of snow coming on 12, 14 and it looks moderate to heavy, and maybe even again on 12-18, so good days ahead. In the northeast, after a rain event yesterday, it's light accumulations on the 16th. Of course, you've got lake effect today if you're near the lakes. Light to moderate, 12-17, and light to moderate on 12-19. Here's the, the forecast mediagram for Alta Ski Area in the Wasatch Front of Utah. Now, on this particular model, here's today. This is Thursday the 12th. This is uh, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Saturday the 14th, and there's Sunday the 15th. Now, this particular model does not produce any measurable snow on Friday. I don't necessarily agree with that. Yesterday, you remember, this model had about six inches, and I said that's really optimistic. I think you could certainly pick up an inch of accumulation um, on Friday across the, the resorts. And you can see this model does increase the humidity. I mean, it basically is saturated by the afternoon. Um, so we're going to have, that'll be very interesting. And the winds are out of the West. They turn directly out of the West. So it's not out of the question. You pick up a little bit of accumulation on Friday and the temperatures all fall as this front comes through. Um, the next chance of snow on this is uh, Saturday afternoon into Sunday. And this generates about six inches 
Um, so potentially a moderate accumulation right there between the 14th and the 15th. So Sunday could be quite good. Um, the winds appear to jump to about 20, 25 miles an hour as that comes in. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Okay, let me go to Colorado. So here's the time height forecast. This is for Vail Pass. Um, so you're looking at a relative humidity forecast next 72 to 80 hours. Green is higher humidity, moisture content, and drier air is yellows and oranges. This is a slice vertically through all of the atmosphere, so you're looking through all the layers. Timeline's at the bottom. You read that from right to left. So you can see just a little bit of moisture with this quick hitting front on Friday afternoon, the afternoon of the 13th into early 14, and then it quickly dries out and moves away. And then a little bit of moisture coming right there, potentially on Sunday. You can kind of see a little streak of green. Uh, I'm, it, it now looks like the storm is going to be really minor. And again, just brushing Colorado on Sunday. So you can, and it really tells the story right there with that really slim area of green. So it's, it's not big. Here's a snow forecast for Vail Pass. And this is, a, it's got about two inches of accumulation, one to two inches, uh, Friday afternoon, Friday night with that little front. And then the snow chances there on Sunday afternoon um, with potentially a one to two inches of accumulation. So there's a couple chances, but these are really small. And again, Colorado is just out of the direct flow as far as this update goes. Okay, here's the jet stream forecast. So by close of business today, jet is west to east, so it's escorting in moisture and storm systems. In fact, the one hitting California right now is a great example of that. Um, by the time we get into Friday afternoon and Friday night, that quick moving storm will have, uh, is basically moving through Utah and Colorado at this point. Another storm loading up. You can see the dip in the jet heading towards California. Now, this is the one that's going to have that weak to moderate atmospheric river surge right there uh, as it hits California. And then eventually that moisture by Sunday gets moved through a lot of the interior and then gone. Here's another storm system, potentially 16 and 17, and then that moves through the interior and a little bit of high pressure ridging right here through about 1220 and beyond. All right, here's the uh, the forecast uh, radar and satellite. So we'll look at this for moisture. Now this is by 530 this afternoon. You can see the blue for a lot of Lake Tahoe and the Sierra. Some of that moves into the interior, but watch what happens as it does. So this is by Friday in the morning. Some of it disintegrates. There's just not a lot of energy or moisture with this storm, but it will like I said, maybe deliver an inch of snow to the Wasatch and the High Uintas. You can already see the next storm uh, poised to hit the West Coast. Now, this is Friday afternoon. Some of that snow then races through Colorado with maybe an inch or two of accumulation. The bigger storm already starting to nail the West Coast. Pretty heavy snow up through the Sierra, uh, parts of Oregon and Washington and the High Cascades and the volcanoes. And this is the storm that pushes that moderate to heavy snow through a lot of uh, interior BC on 1214 right there. This is 1214 in the morning. Um, excellent snow through Idaho as well. Don't want to leave Sun Valley out. I think you're in for heavy snow accumulation out of this thing. And look at the widespread snow on 1214 in the afternoon, all the way from Mammoth up to Tahoe, Shasta, Oregon, through Sun Valley, Idaho, and then moving into the Tetons. The Tetons, another one of my bullseyes, for this, once this flow establishes itself, I think the Tetons are in for some pretty good snow because, like I said, I think the storm track is going to shift a little further to the north and only brush Colorado, so it's in more alignment with the Tetons. You can see the snow continues up there. This is Sunday in the morning, 1215, and snow continues across the Tetons in the afternoon, a lot of Montana and Idaho as well. And then here comes our next storm system, 1216. And in the 1217, spreads an additional so, uh, shot of snow through the Tetons and Idaho and uh, hits some of the, uh, the Wasatch and potentially central and northern mountains of Colorado with more of a brushing effect. And then that continues into 1218, and then it's gone. And then everything kind of slips to the north here with high pressure building in through the end of the period. There's 1221 in the morning. All right, my snow forecast, all of today through tomorrow, um, so that snow in the uh, the Sierra is happening as we speak into tomorrow with potentially 6 to 10 inches of accumulation from Mammoth up to Tahoe and a bit more up certainly around Shasta. Uh, 4 to 8 through the Pacific Northwest, maybe an inch over the Wasatch and potentially an inch or two in parts of Colorado. Okay, here is 1214 through 1221. This accounts for the larger second storm system and potentially the one on 1216 and 1217. 
You can see the storm track primarily just, just north of uh, Colorado um, and just brushing a lot of the Wasatch, potentially four to eight in the Wasatch during this time frame. Um, the Sierra picks up potentially 8 to 14 with more up around Shasta, 1 to 2 feet for the Pacific Northwest. Look at Revelstoke, potentially 15 inches during this time period. It's going to be good. It's that 12-14 hit of moisture, again, moderate to heavy. And Sun Valley Brundage, a foot or more of accumulation, and looking at potentially 1 to 2 feet for the Tetons. So that's I really like that flow over the Tetons if this pattern holds. Light snow in Colorado, 1 to 3 inches of accumulation. All right, into the northeast. Now, a little bit of, obviously, we've got lake effect today, and then there are two storms down the road that could bring light to moderate accumulation. So what you see here in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, upstate New York, largely comes from those two storm systems, um, two separate storm systems down the road. And we could be looking at about six to seven, eight inches of accumulation at a lot of places. And potentially, we'll have to see maybe some heavier accumes along the coast if that storm track plays out um, in that fashion. All right, guys, we're going to end on the big map for the west here. Again, 1214 through 1221 looks pretty good for a number of locations across the west. Thanks for tuning in here, guys. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.